Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. God's voice in my heart. I know it's similar to yesterday, God's speaking in me. Today, God's voice in my heart. And I'm not just trying to come up with titles, but I read to you yesterday that short verse in Hebrews chapter three, where the Lord Jesus gives his word to us in verse seven when he says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, you see, this is the spirit of Christ. He is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, I have not come to testify myself, but to bear witness of Christ. I take out of what is his and give it to you. It's in John 16, verse 14, he says, and Jesus is saying these things there. And here it says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart. You see, the voice of God is to live in our hearts. God's voice in my heart is the title of this devotion. It's that voice, it's the hearing of God. You see, I, I didn't always understand this, but it says faith comes by hearing in Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. When the word of God lives in your heart, you have the hearing. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, blessed are your ears for what they hear, prophets and kings desired to hear and did not, or to blessed are your eyes. Prophets and kings desired to see what you see and did not. You see, what we are able to perceive within us is even greater than the ministry of John, Jesus says in Matthew 11 that these that are least in the kingdom of heaven are greater than John. What is greater? What we're able to perceive, what we're able to recognize. John labored by the gifts and graces given to him effectively and phenomenally to bring the nation, to prepare the nation to receive Jesus. But what he had is not comparable to what we're given. And I know that is such a strong statement to make, but that's what Jesus is saying. The spirit of Christ living in us, giving us the voice of God that we can hear. And Jesus is really concerned for us when he would say to his disciples again and again, are your hearts still hard? Do you still not perceive, recognize and understand? Do you still not connect with what is heavenly? What comes from God? You know, I, of course, as a pastor here at Life Church for 34 years and in the Netherlands before that for some five years, as a pastor, six years actually, as a pastor, of course, I have seen people and, and they don't connect with what the Spirit's doing while somebody could sit right next to them and is having the most heavenly time because they connect with it. And what is the difference the Lord helps us to realize is that our hearts can grow hard. And he then gives an example of the children of Israel in the wilderness of what it means to have a hard heart because he says, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your heart as in the rebellion, in the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me and tried me and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. So I swore my wrath, they shall not enter my rest. Beware then, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. And therefore, he says, do not harden your heart when this voice is here. What causes that voice to become more and more quiet 
and so quiet that we don't perceive it anymore is because our hearts grow hard. You see, the heart is the organ that God created to house His Spirit. Jesus says, out of your heart, the Holy Spirit will come forth, or out of your innermost being, in John chapter 7. But, he, but in another place, he says, out of your heart, or as Solomon would encourage us in Proverbs 4, verse 20 through verse 23, 24, guard your heart above all that you guard, for out of it proceed the issues of life. Jesus, for example, in Mark chapter 8 or so, warns us that out of the heart of man proceed what defiles us. He says, what comes out of the heart, verse 20 of John 8, is what defiles a man. For within, out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murder, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lewdness, and evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile a man. Then he says in Luke chapter 6, I think it is, verse 43, For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns, nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of his heart his mouth speaks. So, what is it, my dear friends, that is to come out of your mouth? It's the voice of God. How can I get the voice of God in my mouth? By having it live in your heart. How can I have the voice of God living in my heart, Pastor? You pray the scriptures. You read them and pray them. And they begin to soften your heart. They make your heart tender. They make your heart gentle. I read to you yesterday from Joel chapter 2, uh, pulled it up again here, where it says, therefore also in verse 12, says the Lord, turn, keep on coming to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and with mourning, until every hindrance is removed and broken fellowship is restored. You see, you gotta, some people say, I cried out to God, but I couldn't hear. He didn't say anything. He didn't come to me. It's because the heart is too hard for you to hear. The voice has been silenced. And now you're in a desperate situation and you want to hear him. <laughs> and then you get so upset because you don't hear anything. And I understand. And no, I do. I don't mean to be harsh with you. But you see, to hear the voice of God, to have the voice of God in your heart, you got to keep that heart gentle and tender and softened. How can I get my heart tender and, and gentle and softened? Having your heart broken by life, life circumstances isn't sufficient to give you the kind of heart that has the voice of God in it. What do you mean? You see, when David, for example, was having a heart that had the voice of God in it, it's because you could see the scriptures written in it. You could see the word alive in his heart. You know how his heart had grown hard by his terrible sin with Bathsheba and how his heart had grown so hard that he was hiding his sin. He was hiding it, I mean, in a bad way. He was lying about it, deceiving about it, and, and he wouldn't be straightforward, sincere, and upright, and honest. And he had given himself over to everything that hardened his heart. And then the prophet would come, Nathan, and confronted him in such a way that he couldn't hide anymore. He couldn't hide, so he came out of the darkness of deception and lust and self-will 
into the light of God. And when he stands in the light of God, he says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your mercy, tender mercies. Blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin always is before me against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity and sin my mother conceived me. Behold, you desire truth in my inward part. In the hidden part, you will make me to know wisdom. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness in these bones that you have broken. In other words, I feel pain in, inside of my body because I've been come so hard. <laughs> I've become so obstinate to you. I become so resistant to you. I have no more delight in you. I don't read your word. I don't pray. I don't go to church. I, I have become so hard, Lord. I've become so hard. I feel the pain of my hardness. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. But do not cast me away from your presence and don't take your Holy Spirit from me, but restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. And oh, it is so beautiful. You go on and on and on. But David here, he says in verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Brush, broken, contrite means crushed heart. These, O oh God, you will not despise. So how was he having a heart that again could hear the voice? He was responding to God's ways that are written in the scriptures that he knew very well. And he was beginning to exercise those ways and offer his heart to God and repent and humble himself and repent. And his heart became softened by the mercies of God's love and the graces of God's goodness. And his heart became tender and the voice was restored in his heart. And I really believe that the Lord will never, ever fail to restore his voice in your heart as you keep offering it to him. As you keep surrendering your heart to him. You know, I want to take you to Zechariah. Zechariah, what an incredible prophet. One of the most messianic prophetic prophets in the Old Testament together with Isaiah is Zechariah. Zechariah only wrote, I think, 13 chapters, but my goodness, compared to the 66 chapters of Isaiah, but what a prophet. And I want you to see chapter three of Zechariah, right? I, I really feel to maybe bring this, this devotion where God wants to restore his voice in your heart. And maybe your heart's become so hard, you, you, you don't know his voice in your heart. You don't feel God speaking. You don't feel you have a word for somebody in season. I mean, here in Isaiah chapter 50, verse four, and I've prayed this verse a lot. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him who's weary because he has awakened me morning by morning. He's awakened my ear to hear as the learned. You see, God will begin to speak in your heart again as you begin to hear his word again. And you have to really make an effort sometimes. When you've grown hard, you have to really make an effort like Hosea chapter 10 verse 12 or 12 verse 10 says, don't rent your garments, rent your heart. And, and you gotta sometimes put the plow in your own heart and go, you know, I have become so hard. I don't hear, I don't perceive, I can listen to preaching. Everybody hears God speaking, I don't. My heart's grown hard. You gotta make an effort to see a change. You can't just say, well, God doesn't talk to me. God doesn't talk to me. I, I don't know I believe anymore because I don't hear him talk. You gotta make an effort. You gotta rent your heart. You gotta mourn and lament as James 4 verse 10 says and weep and keep coming with your heart before God like David did in Psalm 51 and keep coming. But I tell you the truth, if you will do that, God will restore his voice in your heart. 
Now listen to this in Zechariah chapter 3, starting at verse 1. And the angel, he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand, opposing him. I do believe when our hearts are not in the place that is totally right with God, then the devil will oppose you, oppose you. But when your heart gets right with God, the devil can't oppose you. No matter what he tries, he can't stop it. When the voice of God is restored in your heart, you have all you need to be able to withstand the devil and rebuke him and command him to leave you alone, and he will obey you. So the key to get rid of the devil is the voice in your heart, and he will not be able to oppose you. And the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua, listen closely, was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. And I said, let them put a clean turban upon his head. So they put a clean turban upon his head and they put clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua saying, thus says the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways, if you will keep my commandments, then you shall also judge my house and likewise have charge of my courts. And I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. Oh, and it goes on and on and it's so anointed. You could see that Joshua was being opposed. Joshua the priest was being opposed by Satan. Why? Because the life he was living wasn't pure in God's eyes. I know we can feel we are pure in our own eyes sometimes, but we have lost sight of what God considers pure. Jesus said in Matthew 5 verse 8, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You see, when you can't see it anymore, it shows that impurity has hardened your heart. Impurity has caused the voice to have gone silent within you. Oh, I tell you the truth, my friends. Honestly, God knows how I continuously plead and meditate and pray. Hebrews chapter 10, 10 verse 14 from the classic Amplified. By the one sacrifice of himself, he forever completely cleanses and perfects those whom he has consecrated and made holy. And how it says in Titus chapter 3, uh, uh, we are saved by His mercy through the regeneration, through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit whom He gives to us generously through Jesus. I pray these scriptures and I thank the Heavenly Father for cleansing my heart by sprinkling it with the blood of Jesus so that my conscience can perceive His voice. So my, I am conscious of His voice. You see, the conscience goes silent when the heart needs cleansing. And as the heart is cleansed by the Holy Spirit with the blood of Jesus, then the voice again is heard as the conscience is purified. And here we could see that the life that Joshua had embraced had silenced the voice in him. But the voice was restored to him as he was being cleansed. And I really believe, dear friends, that Jesus will never fail to cleanse all of us who come to him in faith and trust and say, Lord, renew in me a steadfast spirit. Create in me a clean heart. Wash me whiter than the snow. Oh, wash me in your precious blood. Holy Spirit, wash my heart with the blood of Jesus and restore my conscience to hear the voice in my heart. And let me close with you here from Zechariah chapter four, where the angel of the Lord showed Zechariah how it was not going to be by the might of man and the power of man that God was going to be restore his people, but it was going to be by his spirit and that he was going to use Joshua the high priest and Zerubbabel the governor to rebuild the temple and restore God's people's communion and fellowship with him. This is after the days of Babylon. 
And it's really so powerful what he shows Zechariah the prophet that I would encourage you to read for yourself. But I want you to see what he says to him. Oh, how I love this. I want you to see what he says to Zechariah. Verse 10, who with reason despises the day of small things for these seven, the eyes of the Lord shall rejoice when they see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Then he said to him, the angel who talked with him, talk with me, what are these two olive trees on the right side of the lampstand and on the left side of it? And a second time I said to him, what are these two olive branches, which are beside the two golden tubes or spout by which the golden oil is emptied out? And he answered me, do you not know what these are? I said, no, my Lord. And he said to me, these are the two sons of oil, Joshua the high priest and Zerubbabel the priest of Judah, and the two anointed ones who stand before the Lord of the whole earth as his anointed instruments. Now, why not take a hold of this Holy Spirit inspired word for you? You are sons and daughters of oil the oil of the spirit of life of Christ in you causes that voice to be so clear in your heart that when you speak, you speak with his voice. Oh, how we need it today. Amen. Have a good day.